Hello everyone, my name is Ambika. In case you don't know me from somewhere and just happen to stumble upon my video, um, well, it's your lucky day, stroke of luck, you just happen to stumble upon my video. I will say this video is going to be a little bit different from what I tend to do on my YouTube channel. So I post videos of poems I've written, I read those poems out and I also go into explaining what the poem stands for in my mind. Obviously poetry is subjective but I also get into uh, what was going on in my mind when I wrote that poem. I will be doing that in this video too but slightly different. So what I'm thinking of doing is combining social issues with poetry. So I will talk to one social issue that I'll pick up and I'll talk to it but I'll also combine it with a poem I've written on that social issue. Um, planning to do it as a segment so hopefully like every week I will do the social poetry format, social issue poetry format and publish it every Saturday so it, maybe it can be called something, the segment can be called social issue poetry or social Saturday, I don't know. I'm just toying with the idea of what I can call the segment but I would love to crowdsource it and know it from you guys like if you have a better name, if you feel like you're way more innovative than I am, please go ahead and comment in the comment section below and let me know. I would love to come up with a better name. Um, but if you feel this is a good enough name, I will keep that. So the social issue that I've chosen to discuss for the purpose of this video is female feticide. And I like to start with this because I feel like there are other important social issues as well, but they kind of fall after. Um, so as an example, this is female feticide and then there's female infanticide, child labor, slavery, child trafficking. So just wanting to start from the beginning, which is female feticide. What is female feticide? Female feticide, a gender selective abortion where a female fetus is illegally aborted, terminated solely based on the reason that the fetus is a girl. Essentially, choosing to abort or terminate a female fetus based on the knowledge that it is of a female, it is a girl fetus, is what female feticide is. Is it still practiced today? Is it a social issue that very much exists. Yes, it is a social issue that very much exists. You may not be seeing it. Uh, maybe some of you might say that you don't see it around, happening around you and you feel like this is a dated topic and this only happens in very select places. Well, to begin with, it is not something that people are going to flaunt. It is an illegal act. So it's not going to be right in your face, even in um, in the realms of the social construct that you live in. It is not something people are going to boast about, hopefully, uh, given that it is illegal, but it is very much relevant and it still is very prevalent. It still exists. The statistics speak to themselves. It is practiced in countries um, like India, Pakistan, China, Africa, and the stats for India are the highest. So the highest number of female feticide happens in India and also the male ratio to female ratio is pretty um, points to this fact. So 1.08 males for every female. So there is to every female child that you see, there is 1.08 male out there. And this is because of the fact that there is selective abortion terminating of a fetus that is happening just on the basis of knowledge of its gender. So why is this act even why are people even performing this act? Like, why do people even choose to kill a fetus based on its gender? Essentially, there are many reasons. One is poverty. Poverty is definitely a big one because there are people who are not earning that well. They're already below, much below the poverty line and they cannot afford to have another child, especially a female child, given that a female child is viewed more as a burden than the breadwinner. So a male child, you can send out to earn money, whereas a female child is more viewed as a source of expenditure versus income. Also because of patriarchal norms and thoughts that have existed within the society for many, many years, as an example, dowry, which is a very prevalent issue 
wear or practice you can call it gifts you can call it money you can call it dowry whatever but men are going to receive that whereas females or women don't receive that their family has to give that um just on the whole lack of knowledge of the prospects of a female child so uh, in many places there is absolutely no prospect that is viewed of a female child they don't view a child as going and earning or doing different things with their life the prospect is viewed as just being a child bearer uh, going to someone else's family joining uh, the family and just the social construct the way that the norms and the acts of the society are it leads to this kind of a decision making so that's really the topic of this video uh, about female feticide. I will say in terms of personal um, experience, I haven't really, I've been fortunate enough to not have experienced anything like this. I don't, I haven't even come across anyone who's shared a personal story of theirs, uh, which probably happened in their family or uh, close friends. It, I have no knowledge of such a personal story. I don't, I've not experienced this in person. But having said that, obviously, as I mentioned early on, it's an illegal act. Nobody's going to, it'll be pretty foolish of someone to come and flaunt it in our faces because it is an illegal act. So I will like to touch upon briefly on the Indian Government Act, uh, which is the Indian Government has passed Preconception and Prenatal Diagnostic Techniques Act, which is PCPNDT in 1994 to ban and punish prenatal sex screening. So screening itself is banned and female feticide, of course, uh, in India. So it is absolutely illegal for a doctor to disclose the sex or the gender of the child and also for someone to get a test or a diagnostic done just, just to find out the gender for no other medical reason. So. I will also leave a link below um, in the comments or in the description box. I will leave uh, a link to where you can find certain schemes that the Indian government has uh, started uh, long ago. Some of them are long ago, which have existed to help and support uh, families which might otherwise be swayed into the decision of uh, female feticide. So there are a lot of schemes out there which can be taken advantage of. So I'm going to get into reading of the poem that I've written on this social issue. Um, here goes. Prayers are floating, hopes are so high for a baby boy. They want or else she must die. Blessings from each temple they seek. So a chance of a girl child this time are bleak. A boy, a boy must the baby be. The reason they uphold is he shall carry forward the legacy. Last time was rough. My baby had become a part of me. But she was slain. Only because she was a she. I was taken to a doctor and asked to lay. My husband whispered a gentle prayer and asked the doctor to say. The doctor said in a solemn tone, a baby girl is growing inside of her. My husband looked at me with anger and gave the direction to kill my daughter as fast as fast it could be. I now know the gender of my new child, a baby girl. Knowledge of this shall have them wild. They had made it clear not once, not twice not thrice but a million times a male child or i shall pay the price i'm scared lost unsure of what to do whose help to ask i'm here without a clue i'm keeping my own little secret told them the child is a male i had no option to lie or all attempts to rescue her shall lead me to die. They confirm again and again what the doctor did say when I was forcefully sent to meet the life-taking man yesterday. 
I lie through my teeth to each and every one as they are desirous of only and only a son. I have been making some plans to send my daughter away as soon as she is born, almost when she sees the light of the day. Away, away, as farther away from this town I will send her while the joy of her birth still remains in my mind a blur. I've spoken to my midwife. She knows a good place to take her so no atrocity she can face. Prayers are floating. Hopes are so high for a baby boy they want or else she must die. This is hopefully a thought-provoking poem and this leaves you with some kind of um, something that you've learned today, something that you felt today, something that you empathize with today. And I will be coming back with another social issue Saturday or social issue poetry Saturday. Do let me know in the comments below. And I hope to read another poem to you and talk to you and discuss with you another social issue. Educate each other and um, carry forward this segment. I look forward to another video with you very, very soon. Take care, bye, be safe.